There's only one difference between a crazy man and me. The crazy man thinks he's sane. I know I'm crazy. Salvador Dali. Hi, and welcome back again. What follows is another of Don Quixote's energetic defenses of the order of knight errantry. Echoing Virgil and the Bible, he proclaims that knight errantry's purpose is the punishment of the proud and the rewarding of the humble. He laments the lack of real knights and the modern surplus of courtly knights, and even launches into an impassioned retelling of the Arthurian legend of the enchanted boat. After another nostalgic contrast between the golden ages of the past and the iron age of the present, now, however, sloth triumphs over diligence, idleness over work, vice over virtue, Don Quixote then praises a series of chivalric heroes. We find his usual favorites, Amadis of Gaul, Palmarin of England, Tirante el Blanco, and Don Belianis and also the occasional contradictions, such as when he lauds both the Saracen warrior Rodomante and the Christian Roland. Just when he seems to approach the peak of his insanity, Don Quixote takes a final sophisticated jab at the barber. He says that if Philip III follows his advice, the Turk will be left tugging at beards, meaning that the Turk will be left pulling out his own beard in shame, but also that upon his defeat, he will be turned into a barber. This is funny, yes, but it's also hostile. I say this so that Lord Basin here will know that I understand him. Telling and listening to stories are like combat here. Is Cervantes revealing something about his own art? The barber backs down, but the priest presses Don Quixote about his obsession in ways that recall part one. I hold that these are all fictions, fables, and falsehoods, dreams retold by men who are awake, or I should say, half asleep. Did you know the love triangle among Roland, Angelica, and the Moor Medoro is found in the epic chivalric poem Orlando Furioso, published in 1532 and written by the Italian poet Ludovico Ariosto, one of Cervantes' favorite authors. Don Quixote rejects the criticism as another error, and he insists that chivalric knights were real because he has actually seen them. Hinting at the theme of race, he says Amadis had white skin, but a black beard, as opposed to the blonde ideal, and then he insists that he had good physiognomy. Nevertheless, Don Quixote expresses doubts when the barber asks about giants. He indicates the Philistine Goliath as a biblical giant and brings up the archaeological discovery of certain bones in Sicily, the geometry of which suggests that they belonged to huge beings. But in the end, and quite reasonably, he suspects that Morgante's size was normal because he slept under a roof like everybody else. What is the first meaning of a beard in part two? A, it alludes to the agricultural theme. B, it alludes to the theme of race. C, it alludes to the theme of death. Correct answer, B, it alludes to the theme of race. Confusion continues in Don Quixote's description of Reinaldos. Unlike his admiration at the beginning of part one, now Don Quixote sees Reinaldos as treacherous, overly choleric, a friend of thieves and other degenerate people. Similarly, his description of Roland makes him sound like a famous Ottoman pirate with a dark complexion and a red beard. Finally, Don Quixote returns to the problematic love triangle between Roland, Angelica, and the Moor, Medoro, which we saw halfway through part one. At first, Don Quixote follows the priest's lead, considering Angelica a whore, a wanderer, and somewhat capricious, and suggesting that author Ariosto left her ruling in Katai, China, because he did not want to go into more detail about her. But then Don Quixote retreats, saying that libels and satires are beneath his chivalric code, and he even cites a favorable poem about her by Lope de Vega. At this point, cries are heard in the patio, and the chapter ends. Who could it be? That's all for now. We will see each other in the next video.
If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.